Joining us now, former Fed Governor Randy Krosner. Uh, Randy, thank you for being here. So is it binary? Is it, you know, if you raise rates, you're definitely going to have a hard landing. If you don't raise rates, you're going to avoid it. Or is it a bit more complex than that? Much more complex than that. I wish it were so straightforward. And the Fed wishes it were so straightforward. Um, you know, whether they raise rates another quarter percentage points or not, percentage point or not, that's not going to make or break the U.S. economy. I mean, if it does, then we're in a lot more, more, more trouble. So, you know, we're at a relatively high level compared with the, the recent past. Um, and we're now in uh, a, a positive territory, uh, that positive real rate territory that is that uh, adjusting for, uh, for inflation. Rates have turned positive. They've been negative uh, from, from before. Uh, we're now seeing real wage growth, uh, which is great for for workers, but that likely means to be less demand uh, from the uh, uh, from the uh, uh, the employers because now it's relatively more expensive to employ people. And so I think with the the lags, it's going to be really difficult to bring inflation down sustainably without having a substantial slowdown, possibly recession, not necessarily recession. That's why I call it kind of a hardish landing, not a hard landing, not a soft or softish landing, but kind of a hardish land. Somewhere in the middle-ish, perhaps. Um, Susan Collins this morning said that there's actually a wider path to a soft landing. So that seems kind of in conflict with, with what you believe. Well, I think they've become much more sanguine about the possibility of a soft or softish landing. And, and I don't dismiss that. So I'm not saying that it's you know certainly not going to be possible. The challenge is we've never seen that before. And so it is conceivable that this, uh, this could happen. But everything has to go right. We have to have inflation expectations stay well anchored. We have to have, um, avoid any major geopolitical shocks. And gosh, I think just looking forward, um, it's going to be hard to say that everything is just going to go exactly right. It kind of reminds me of that pretty nice piece this week where they talked about 95. I think it was in the journal uh, and how kind of as in the words of Blinder, nothing bad happened. Right, Randy? I guess that's sort of what we're looking for to happen again. Yeah. And, and that's why I don't dismiss it. But gosh, it just it doesn't seem likely to me that everything is going to work in uh, whether it's in Asia or in Russia or in the Middle East uh, or potentially elsewhere. Uh, we're not going to get some sort of shock from uh, from there. Um, and there's just uh, there are a lot of political shocks in uh, potentially in many countries around the world over the next year. Do you think Collins this morning brought up the point about uh, savings drawdowns? Um, and I know some bank CEOs have talked about consumers being willing to entertain the idea of borrowing more uh, at this stage. Do you think that's going to mean that the economy does become more rate hike sensitive than it has been in the past? To the extent that uh, uh, that individuals and households are, are borrowing more at current rates, it certainly does make them more interest rate sensitive. One of the challenges for the Fed is that when interest rates were so low uh, uh, a couple of years ago, everybody refinanced into 30-year fixed rate mortgages so they can raise rates as high as they want. But if people are not moving, they're not experiencing those higher, uh, those, those, those higher rates. And, uh, you know, more people will move over time. And that's one of the challenges that if the unemployment rate starts to move up, then people are more likely to move, then more supply of houses are going to come onto the market. That might put downward pressure on, on houses. And, and so you could get a, um, a very difficult situation there that makes it more likely for a hardish type of, uh, type of landing. You think that the market reaction to the Fed has been so strong they may not need to raise rates, that the market itself will basically take care of it? Well, we certainly finally saw a strong reaction from the market. Um, you know, I think the Fed has been really clear that they're going to raise rates, you know, roughly to around the level that the, they're at and then keep them there for a long time and not just quickly cut them. The market seemed to have been expecting, oh, well, we're not going to take the Fed seriously. They've always cut before. But in the old days, um, you know, the, the metaphor was you take the punch bowl away when the party really gets going. And many of the market participants haven't seen that because that hasn't happened in 15 or 20 years. But the Fed is really committed to that because the last time they didn't take the punch bowl away when the party got going, the late 70s, early 1980s, when inflation was as high as it, as it has been over the last couple of years, it, inflation then really took off and then they had to raise rates to double-digit levels. They don't want to do that.